That's all. Good morning. Welcome to uh, the Path to Enlightenment. We're covering Masonic maturity through scripture. We're going to be talking about part one, chapter one of Masonic maturity, maturity through scripture. As always uh, said, um, Freemasonry is not a religion, but a religious organization. So its overall objective is to bring man into all truth. Uh, truth is truth regardless of time or place. And looking at the world we're living in today, a renewing of the mind is necessary. So I do guide you, uh, recommend to you Romans 12 and 2, where it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is <clears throat> good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So with that said, the book available on Amazon, Maturity Through Scripture, attempts to aid you in, re in that renewal process through correlated Bible and Masonic teachings designed to improve the spirit and character of a man and elevate him to a godly level of peace, power, and prosperity. So with that having been said, let me give you, um, let's go to work, okay? We're talking about part one, and we're gonna go into chapter one from there. <coughs> one is labeled uh, the acquisition of something through a plan or set procedures. So I'm going to go in and, and ask Brother Brothers, Brother Al. Yes, sir. Did you get a chance to go through part one in the book and what uh, observations have you had? Uh, you with part one, uh, as we went from uh, the, the Enter the Apprentice going over into the Inkling for Better, <clears throat> uh, what stuck out to me is that we have to uh, escape this naturalness that we're stuck into and become spiritual beings. Uh, I guess you say it all the time that you never get the whole Mason until you get the spirit of the Mason. And so at this point, we have to take what we've been observing, interpreting, and start to apply it. And as we start to apply it, uh, we have to take the wisdom that, we're, that we've been given and apply that wisdom or apply that knowledge, which makes it wisdom. Uh, knowledge, you know, uh, it's acquired information, but you have to take action. And this is what it was saying to me, uh, is that we have to stop talking about things because uh, as we read through the Proverbs, we have to be working. And if we're talking, that means we're not working. So talk alone, it's not gonna get the job done. It's good to get the information, it's good to talk about it and have a mind melting group and everything. But uh, like you said, after you observe and interpret, you must start to apply some of this uh, good stuff that we're talking about. Okay. Uh, any idea, any uh, input, Lucas, on what he, what you've heard so far? You got to turn your mic on. Uh, uh, <coughs> not yet, sir. I'm just listening now to okay. educate more myself. And uh, well, let me say this back up just a tad. Lucas is uh, an electrical engineer from the Philippines, in the Philippines. Brothers is in Dallas, Texas. And of course, Wishful Master Searles is in New Orleans. Um, this part one, and although we label it in an apprentice degree, and then we have fellow craft degree and master mason degree, this, this book is not not totally for or only for the Masonic order. These principles, these precepts are good for all. Uh, actually, men and women can learn if they and can benefit if they practice these the enclosed principles and precepts. So when we look at uh, part one, <coughs> We're talking about the acquisition of something through a plan or set procedures. 
everything on earth operates by way of a process. Uh, you don't just happen. There has to be a, a, a plan put in motion. And it, all too often people have plans in motion that they didn't put there. They didn't set the plan or set the procedures, but then they swear something just happened. Well, there's always cause and effect as we talked about last time. So there's always. The trick here is if we get sick and tired of being sick and tired, then we wind up with a desire for better. And when you have that um, desire for better, then you start seeking the process that it's going to require to achieve what you're after. So uh, everything costs something. It costs time, energy, study, money. But if we want to do something uh, else, we want to get something new, we want to do something new, we want to be better, is going to require an investment. And uh, that investment, again, can be time, energy, studying, money, or what have you. So um, this, the plan is essential. Now, obviously, we will sit down with pen and paper and want to put down our plan. But as you've uh, already seen or noted in the introduction, it's better to be led to a plan than to create one on your own accord. And when I say led, that means to ask, pray for guidance. Now that guidance can come to us in a little small, a small inner voice, or it can come from another individual who really validate what you are already thinking. Okay. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> one of the ways to really ignite that small inner voice is to go to the Bible on whatever subject you're considering. Uh, and I say that because if you have a good study Bible, you can go to the back of it, which is called a concordance. And you should have all types of topics. And you go there and it will give you the scriptures that pertain to what you're searching for. It'll give you the scriptures that can give you answers or lead you to the answers for what you're searching for. Because see, and I, the reason I'm recommending that is because the Bible does two things. It offers protection and provisions. So it will, it's, it will protect you and it will provide for you, provide information, provide whatever it is you need in the words of the Bible. And I say in the words, because those words will lead you to where you need to be. And again, we're talking about setting up a plan and a process, having a plan for your life and not just getting by, not just hanging loose, trying to make it. If we have a plan, then life is much more, is happier and is more joyous, okay? So uh, I do say in, in the book here on page, uh, well in the, this part, that the Bible provides a foundation for life. It provides reassurance of its intent for our lives. It explains uh, its origin. It addresses man's present and future, and it validates Jesus Christ. So the Bible, uh, that's why we use the Bible. And of course, other <laughs> that are in the Masonic order use their uh, sacred book of law. But I submit to you all of the uh, five or six original religions pretty much teach the same thing. 
Brother Moore, welcome. And uh, let's see if we can get you to cut on your mic and your video, please. On mute. There we go. How you see are you going? All right, man. We having a um, our lodge is having a little um, a annual cook off today, and I'm out here, you know, as a vendor. But I didn't want to miss the um our um meeting this morning, so I'm gotcha. sorry. About now, uh, oh, you in Florida? Yeah, I'm in West Palm Beach. Okay, how did you fare with the? How did you fare with the storm? Man, it passed us, man. We didn't get it because I'm on the um, Atlantic side, you know? Okay, okay. Yeah, so it, it, it was on during the Gulf of Mexico. So, you know, uh, I'm glad of that. You know what I mean? Okay, I was, I was just wondering about this cook-off in the midst yeah. of the storm. <laughs> <laughs> well, the day in Goshen, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, one of the things, we, we're talking about part one in the in the Masonic maturity through scripture. And we just, I, I was just saying that everything has to operate by way of a process. So we need a plan. We right. need procedures in place because first of all, we all want to become better men, but you need a plan, you need a procedure by which you will do that. And it, it always requires relationships. You, we have to have relationships. Of course, the first relationship is you with your creator. And then from there, your uh, it should be you with your fellow man. Someone right. who is on your side, you're on your side, uh, someone who's called a friend. And got to check that <laughs> real closely. Uh, I do mention that we are interdependent creatures. So... Uh, if you look at just life, we are all depending on the fellow, the next man to do what he has to do so we can do what we need to do. Right. If my car breaks down, I'm depending on the mechanic to do his job. <laughs> okay. So I can have my car back to go to work so I can take care of my family. Now, when it's, I say go to work, my boss is waiting for me to do my job so he can take care of his family. <clears throat> so everybody's waiting on somebody. And that's the, the fallacy of, of bigotry and prejudiceness and so forth to act as if we don't need somebody because everyone is waiting on somebody else to do what they need to do. And there's, there's something for everybody to do. Okay. In this travel, this path, if you haven't, you will um, probably identify your purpose and what it is you're to do with your life. I said everybody's waiting on someone to do what they need to do, what they're supposed to do. So we're going to find out what it is we're supposed to do with this life we have. And it's nothing more joyous than to fulfill your purpose. Any comments, any thoughts on that? Uh, well, um, I, I, I was reading something along with um, reading chapter one about like fellowship and things like that. That's why we need to, you know what I'm saying? Be around other people on the same path and things like that. And it, it, it's relating to everything that you're saying because we learn from each other. We, we can hold each other accountable in our moments of weakness and things and what have you. So it coincides with what we're speaking about in chapter one out of the book. You know, like, like I literally read this last night because I read chapter one like three or four times and it, it was just reiterating everything that you're saying in the book. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, uh, as I was actually reading over the book too and going over some of my notes that I had written into the book, uh, some one of the things that first jumped out at me was uh, the basic provision and protection that we uh, are given, the, which is part of the rights and benefits. <clears throat> but 
it, it comes into play because you need to be in covenant. Now, the scripture says, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Uh, we know that we are, uh, it also says Hosea 4 and 6, that my people perish for lack of knowledge. And so we know that it's, it's number one upon us to fulfill our end of the bargain. <clears throat> that if it's a conditional clause in this provisional setup of relationship, now we know that God can and he will provide for us and he has protection for us if we are abiding by the precepts and the standard that he has given us to follow. Now, if you're outside of that precept and outside of those standards and so you're not doing your end of the bargain, then you're in breach of contract. And that was just one of the things that jumped out to me. It's kind of like uh, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, Malcolm, now Chesedek versus uh, Mount Freshman, you know, righteousness versus wickedness. wickedness. Uh, with everything that you do, there is a decision that has to be made. And every decision, whether we think so or not, uh, it's, it's, a, it's vitally important. It's a life and death decision to, to an extent uh, because everything that we do is soil and we're planting things. And whatever you plant, we know that wherever you sow, we're going to reap. Whether we think about it, what we're doing by commission or mission, whatever that we're doing that we're putting out, it's going to come back to us. Now, let me, let me say this um, because I want to keep it all straight and true. You mentioned something about a covenant and uh, you don't necessarily have to be a part of the covenant to receive the benefits of the principles and the precepts that God has put in place. No, I was talking about being in covenant. Well, as far as being lined up with the with the precepts. Okay, here's what I'm trying to say. There are <clears throat> people that observe the same principles and precepts, and they benefit materialistically. Yes. So the the objective in what we're trying to do here should go far beyond the material gain. Now, unfortunately, most of the population gear uh, gauge your success your happiness and, and so and accomplishments by your material means okay but the, i present to you some <coughs> that that's that can make you happy but it doesn't bring you joy so the bottom line there has, there has to be a separation there but again the principles and precepts work let me let me put it another way in church, out of church. Yeah. Well, in maybe I should out of covenant because the law is the law, just like it's true. So I say that to say that uh, somebody watching this will say, "Well, hey, I don't need to go through all of that. I'm doing pretty good. I got money in the bank, a nice house. I got this. I got that, and and that's their that's their measuring stick." Well, when I say covenant, I'm not talking about it biblically or spiritually. I'm just talking about an agreement between two parties. <clears throat> and when I say, you know, we have to be in agreement, which means that we have to follow the standard, whatever that is, for whatever it is that we're going after, whether it's spiritual or this material, whether it's uh, between your, your, your husband and your wife. You know, okay. uh, that's what I'm saying. You just have to be into agreement and in line with the precepts that's being laid out if you want to achieve the level of success that others have who's come before okay. you. You have well, to follow so that, that plan yeah. or that recipe. All right. Taking you back to, to uh, <clears throat> taking you to chapter one, we always say, and you, you've heard it, that masonry will make, we take good men and make them better men. So basically we want men who already have good character and yeah. good morals, and then we profess to make them better. And in the book, I do say that uh, it's not true. We're not going to make you better. But rather, what we will do is submit you to a process where you make yourself better. And my logic behind that is you should never want someone else to be in control. If I can make you better, I can make you worse. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah. 
Well, it, it goes back to what you were saying uh, also in the book and, and just with the associated scriptures that we had to read in Proverbs, from Proverbs 12 to 14 to Proverbs 22, uh, that we need to be working. Uh, and it's as simple as that. And that will basically uh, kill a whole lot of the things that's going on. If we are out there doing what we're supposed to be doing and, uh, and we can associate that working, it's, it's going to get everything done because it, it kills off the facilitation. It kills off the laziness. Like you say, a ship at sea can correct itself if it's yeah. moving. But you see, what I want to do is eliminate or minimize the the uh, that fallacy that when you come into the Masonic order, we're gonna make you all hungry. Oh, yeah. We're gonna make you better. Well, you get out what you put in. Because here's the thing. Uh, Again, no man should be in control of you. Man was put here to have dominion, but not necessarily over other men, not over other men. He was, have, he was put here to have dominion over the beast and the, the fowl in the air and so forth, but not other men. We are to come together and choose to work together so that for the benefit of both, for the benefit of all. Yeah. And that means I have to be in control of my vessel. You have yes, to sir. be in control of your vessel. Again, last meeting we talked about each man having a path to travel and a talent to get him down that path. Now we can assist and aid one another. <clears throat> That's called working in harmony. Yes, sir. But and in working in harmony, I make me better. You make you better. So yes. once, we, once we accept that, mm -hmm. then we stop looking at the other men. If you yeah. talk to people about problems and challenges they have, nine out of 10 times, they're going to tell you what the other person did, what the other person is doing wrong, and so forth. They're never going to talk about their part of the problem their contribution to the problem. And only when you accept your contribution can you make yourself better. Yeah. Well, you know, that calls for us to truly have to uh, be truthful with ourselves and give a truthful self-evaluation. And once we do that, then we can become, you know, in harmony with others. And like you said, harmony is the strength and support of our societies, especially more so of ours. And so, yeah, you're right. We definitely have to be in harmony. If there's going to be some competition, it should be within ourselves to be a better person daily, not trying to outdo our brothers because that can, you know, create a spike or envy or some type of, you know, ill feelings. But like you said, uh, we need to be working and trying to be a better person every day yes, sir. instead of trying to outdo the next guy, try to uplift him, but not outdo him. You know, I, my focus should be on trying to be the best me that I could be every day, better than I was yesterday, you know. And if I can get you know on that level and then bring that to the table, it takes harmony to a whole nother level. But well, we, I'm sorry, go ahead. Mark, go ahead, Brother John, uh, Moore, you wanted to say something? Yeah, um, you know, my fallacy coming into the lodge as a young man, right? Because I came in, I held in what, when I was 29, I'm 44 okay. now. So, you know, I thought I was on the right path and a, a good man. And then like you say, I'm thinking I'm coming into the lodge. I'm gonna be made better, and I realizing that I got to do some work to be yeah. a better. Person. Feel me? Like literally, and every day it's a struggle. You know, as a younger man, you think you know it all. You know, because I'm like I done found the answer. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mason now. I'm this and that, and then I'm following the footsteps of my dad. And I'm thinking, you know, I know. Think I know more than my dad too. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then realizing that I see what my dad was teaching me, and then I see what my brothers and, and what the teachers of masonry teaching me. You know what I'm saying? Even though I'm I'm in the truth right now, I feel it. But every day it still works. It still yeah. works. You feel me? That's every right. day. That's right. And see the the chapter one with saying the inkling for better. So that means we have to understand that work is required. We're going to have to get some knowledge into, not as I said, not only our heads, but our hearts also. Because knowledge is knowing what to do, but wisdom is knowing when to do, how to do. And so uh, quite often we want to move quick, fast, and in a hurry. 
And I like to say one of the most important things you can ever know is when to do a thing. You can know what, you can know how, but timing is everything. So um, wisdom with uh, in our life is like money. You can do more with it than without it. It's better to have more of it than less of it. And it's better to have it sooner than later. Now, wisdom comes in, in different forms or from different forms. Yes, it can come from you studying your sacred book of law, your religious book, and that small inner voice talking to you. Yes, it can come from uh, of another person. You have to be open and you have to be with somebody that you probably or you respect and look up to if you, in order to get that wisdom from them, because we're not going to learn from somebody if we don't respect them, if we don't trust them. So now I'm talking about what are you going to do with your, uh, <laughs> your people, the people in your life. If you don't respect them, you don't trust them, why are they in your life? Hmm. Principle of vacuum. <laughs> that's, that's, a hard, that's a hard thing because, see, uh, and on the radio yesterday, uh, asking people uh, about friends, what do you consider a friend? How do you describe a friend? And so all types of reasons and definitions were given, but the bottom line is everybody that you know does not classify to be a friend. So some people you have to just get them out of your life completely. We all have baggage and that's the reason why we're talking in, in Along with that inkling for better, you should recognize the need for change in you. in you. So you not only want to get rid of the people that are not for you and helping you advance, but you want to get rid of those characteristics that you have that keep you from advancing. Yes, sir. So it's not the other person. And, and when we go to page 31, we're talking about the affirmations. Uh, and these affirmations are, I find them very, very helpful. Uh, in fact, what I did is I recorded the affirmations on my cell phone so that uh, I can play them when I go to bed, when I'm going to sleep. That's how I did the self-confidence formula. I got to do that with the affirmations now. But that's how I did with the self-confidence formula in order to memorize it. But like I said, I do that every morning, every day. I start my, when I thank God for waking me up in the name of Christ, you know, I, I do my self-confidence formula. You know, I read your book, you know, the affirmations. Like I read, I, I do the self-confidence formula, read the Bible, then I read your affirmations because I've added that to my routine now. So I got to record it in order to commit it to memory. Well, the, these affirmations here in the book, or excerpts. Right. So if you go to uh, January 12th, 2018 on the, in the videos, the entire affirmation, seven affirmations are there. And the amazing thing, not amazing, but the interesting thing about it is there are times I myself find uh, I can lay down and I can repeat the, all those affirmations like clockwork. There are other times I lay down and I start saying them to myself, not listening to them on my phone, but I'm actually saying it and I forget things. I get thrown off or some other thought comes to my mind, <clears throat> which what I'm trying to say is we're, we're in constant struggle to maintain control of our capital. 
maintain control of what leads us around in our life. We, are, we have to constantly fight the flesh, the world, and the devil and keep them out of our head. Right. I thought it was just me, brother. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing, <laughs> you know, because I'm going through and I'm, uh, I am pure spirit with uh, da, 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 and then all of a sudden I'm thinking about my dog. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> distractions, distractions, disappointments, delays, and there's another D word. I can't, I, it won't come to me right now. But the bottom line is disappointments. All of those will come to throw you to mess up your focus. And the, the idea, fellas, is for us to get control and stay focused. So that is why you use every tool available. That's why it's called work, brother. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Yes, you're well, right. In that video, by chance, you didn't mention it, but it's uh, Abundant Love, Life, and Happiness. That's the name of that video, that uh, affirmation song. Now, if we look at the two books of Samuel, those are introductions to the books of two books to the key books of Kings. Um, Samuel addresses the royal uh, government and the family of David. The books of Kings tells about the successor of Sol which is Solomon. It tells about the rules of economics governing of the families and so forth. The bottom line is when you go to Kings in the Bible, and I'm going there because uh, that too helps us to focus and gives us grounds for our plan, if you will. Because in the two book of Kings in the Bible, it tells you how the different Kings fared according to their commitment to the creator. How well, how their life was a result of how well they followed principles, godly principles and precepts. So the, one of the things that we, and I'm taking you back, cause and effect. You have to decide what you're gonna follow. You're gonna have to decide what is good in your life. And so you're gonna have to develop your own doctrine. Does that make sense to you? Are you familiar it, with that it, word doctrine? Listen, it, it, it does now. Like as a younger man, it didn't, you know. You know, that stuff go over your head, you hear it, but you don't realize that you really have to think about this stuff and apply this stuff. You know, it ain't no magic formula to it. it like it, it's work, making decisions. And you make the best decisions, you know, based on the thoughts and the information that you have and the thoughts that you entertain, you know. And that's how, in my opinion, that's how you develop your doctrine, you know. Because sometimes we let people in our lives, like, when you, like we're talking about relationships and things like that, we're letting people in our lives, friends, everybody trying to be cool with everything. And then we got people around us that shouldn't be around us at all. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you know, yes. All this keeping an open mind, things like that. You know, you can't just do anything because you got yeah. people that are doing some crazy stuff, doing like what we say in the hood, killers, and they, they shouldn't be nowhere in your vicinity and they bringing trouble on you and your family. You know what I'm saying? So that's how you got to, that's what we come back to you saying developing a doctrine and knowing who to cut off, who to allow in your life and, and, and you know, just doing the right thing as far as thinking right. You know what I mean? What's up, baby? Some of some of those killers, some of those killers are not actually killing with guns and knives, yeah. but with loose morals. Loose morals. And promoting the acceptance of contrary lifestyles. Now I'm gonna put a pin in it right there. Okay. I'm gonna announce that of, of course our next path to enlightenment Zoom meeting is gonna be July 24th, again at 9 a.m. And so these meetings are open to all wishing for change and increase in their lives. 
they just need to contact me so you can get on the notification list. There are no set rules to attend these meetings. We just ask that you do get a copy of the Masonic Maturity through Scripture. It's offered uh, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle. So get that. We're going to look at Chapter 2 on the 24th. It is rewarding to provide these video lessons. I thank you for your viewing. I thank you for your subscriptions. And uh, if you choose to want to support us, then just text GIVE to 281-524-4344. If you're like me, you're not going to remember all of that. Just go to the About section in our YouTube channel, and it will be there. So see you next time. Okay.